I had the pleasure of presenting our work on the use of a particular nuclear medicine imaging technique called Dotatate PET imaging, merge with MRI, for the treatment of patients with recurrent meningiomas after prior surgery and or prior radiosurgery or radiation therapy. That may sound esoteric, but you have to remember that meningiomas are the most common kind of intracranial tumor, that about half of the patients have grade two meningiomas, which are especially prone to recurrence even after prior radiation, and it can often be difficult to identify the exact targets that are necessary to be treated with follow-up radiosurgery. And with the application of this nuclear medicine technique, it could be done with much greater precision, which yields better efficacy as well as decreased complications. I was pleased that in response to my talk, there was a lot of interest. There were many questions from the floor, and I was moderating that session as well on radiosurgery for meningiomas. So it cannot go on indefinitely, but there was much discussion afterwards from different people asking how to apply the technique, and I'm hoping this will become a standard in radiosurgery for patients with meningiomas all around the world. This was part of a general afternoon session, not just about meningiomas, but one preceding that for patients with vestibular schwannomas, in a sense the paradigm of the use of radiosurgery for benign intracranial tumors which has vastly transformed the outcomes and the outlook of patients with these tumors from around the world. I was trained that all such patients needed surgery and the complication rate from that surgery, even in the most experienced and expert hands, is not trivial, let us say. Whereas the complication rate from radiosurgery is very close to zero and the efficacy is pretty close to 100%. And that has had a major impact on the lives of really millions of people around the world at this point. This morning, there was a very stimulating session about functional radiosurgery. The use of radiosurgery to treat people not with tumors or vascular malformations, let's say, but conditions that affect function, such as tremor, Parkinson's disease, even psychiatric disorders. And that's something that many radiation oncologists and even some neurosurgeons do not know that much about and this is a venue where they can hear about it from experts and really decide is this something that is appropriate for the patients that I see is this another subdiscipline that I want to get involved in perhaps I have a colleague who I want to stimulate to work on this that's what happens at the ISRS when there are new trials being planned, multi-center, even international trials being planned. This is where people can learn about them and be able to participate in those upcoming trials. They could be stimulated to do studies of their own in their own institutions and thereby drive the field forward. And slowly but surely, as information is disseminated at the ISRS and new information and new evidence becomes standard, that is how it all becomes in mainstream. And practitioners who don't attend learn about it eventually as well, and cannot deny the reality that somehow this all has to get paid for. So insurers of all kinds all around the world, whether they're government or private insurers, also learn about it and learn that these are now standard treatments that should be supported. Another way that the ISRS has had an impact on many, many millions of people around the world. In fact, every year is the application of radiosurgery for people with metastatic tumors, which is now by far the most common application of radiosurgery in North America, uh, in Japan, and to some extent even in Western Europe, and gradually expanding to the rest of the world. There are 10 times of, as many people each year who get metastatic brain tumors compared to any kind of intracranial tumor. So when I started doing radiosurgery 27 years ago, everyone was getting what's called whole brain radiation therapy, which is what it sounds like, radiation therapy to your whole brain. And maybe if you had one metastatic tumor, you would get radiosurgery added on. Well, as a result, over time of a steady push towards moving away from irradiating the whole brain, towards treating the individual tumors where they are using radiosurgery, the effectiveness of treating people with metastatic tumors and the complication rate in terms of memory loss and the loss of ability to think 
has drastically changed, almost like a 180 degree change. And you put that in tandem with improvements of medical treatment for people with metastatic tumors. You know how people who even five years ago were basically doomed to an early death who are now in essence being cured of their metastatic tumors, including brain tumors, and going on to live high quality lives for many years.